Ford recently announced they have developed a breakthrough new battery, lithium manganese rich or LMR chemistry that offers longer range and lower cost. Days later, General Motors unveiled a breakthrough battery chemistry that offers the potential to be price competitive with LFP batteries that are popular in China while still offering better energy density. Their lithium manganese rich or LMR chem... Wait, did they just announce the same thing? It's not the first time Groupthink has run through Detroit, like, you know, back in the 70s when they're all working on a smaller van concept. With that bit of history out of my brain, let's look at what we know about lithium manganese rich batteries and see if it can help jumpstart Detroit's electric vehicle efforts. EV batteries are named for the mixture of elements that get mined, processed, and deposited on a thin aluminum foil to form the cathode. You already know LFP batteries are hugely popular in China new energy vehicles. They have some advantages. Chief among them is their lower cost. Chief disadvantage is they're a little heavier and less energy dense. NMC is often used as a blanket term for the other type of battery that's popular in EVs, but there are various differences in the chemistry. In North America, Ford uses nickel manganese cobalt batteries in a pouch format from SK on. GM's batteries that they build with LG Energy under the Altium Cells joint venture are actually NMCA chemistry in a pouch format. It adds aluminum to the cathode active material, and so does Tesla. They use NCA, nickel cobalt aluminum, in the cylindrical cell it produces with Panasonic. The larger 4680 cell that they designed themselves is NMC811. The number refers to the mixture of materials for the cathode. There are other mixtures used by other battery companies too. When they revealed the 4680 a long, long time ago in what now seems a galaxy far, far away, they said it would someday be cobalt free. So as you can see, when I or someone else talks about NMC batteries, there are different mixtures and sometimes we really should call them NCA, NCMA or NMC. And of course, there are advantages and disadvantages to each variant. That's why specific ratios of elements is often not publicized. It's a secret. Manganese is dirt cheap. Aluminum is more expensive but we use it for lots of other things. Nickel is six times more expensive than aluminum, but supply is being increased to meet demand. Now with all these charts, you can see the EV bubble that peaked in early 2022 and then burst as did some companies go under. And with all that, we get to cobalt and you can see why we wanna get it out of our batteries. Used in EVs, yes, but also in your laptop, your cell phone, power tools, drones, and lots of other devices. It's expensive, more than twice the price of nickel. 73% of it comes from just one country, the Democratic Republic of Congo. From that one country, about 20% goes through artisanal mining, which sounds lovely, but it's the worst kind. These are smaller, less regulated, unregulated operations where children do get put to work because the country is poor. The consumer electronics industry is trying to put a stop to this, as is the chocolate industry, which faces a similar challenge of children in impoverished countries being made to work. And with that depressing note, we come to LMR batteries that use virtually no cobalt and very little nickel, the two most expensive elements. Ford was first to recently brag about their latest development, showing pouch-style batteries rolling off their pilot production line in Michigan. They made the claims of significant cost reduction, great energy density, even better than some NMC battery chemistries with a high nickel content, and safety that is more like LFP batteries that are very robust and far less likely to have thermal issues. No production launch was given or other details. Honestly, I didn't know how much Ford was doing their own battery development. Their battery center of excellence is home to more than 135 chemists, manufacturing engineers, and scientists, which all sounds impressive. GM, on the other hand, has been talking about their investments that they've been making. In addition to their partner, LG Energy, 
They're swinging with Samsung on another battery plant and getting LFP batteries from a yet to be disclosed source for the Silverado EV 3WT. It's likely from cattle. Kurt Kelty, their VP of battery, is a battery industry veteran, including executive positions at Tesla and Panasonic. He gave a presentation last fall for GM's Investor Day, where he outlined their revised strategy and talked about their new battery innovation center, where research and pilot activities take place, which is like what Ford has, but also their battery development center, where they will progressively scale manufacturing up to full mass production. This comes from their learnings in the problems ramping up Ultium cells with LG Energy. There are too many production learnings in between making a few hundred cells on a pilot line to mass production, and this development center will help them transition to that scale. Comparing GM's LMR chemistry to NMC811, you can see a huge reduction in expensive nickel and virtually no expensive cobalt. That's the word they used, virtually, so I assume there is some trace amounts. In, in nature, small amounts of cobalt naturally form with nickel, so maybe that's why, or maybe there's another reason. Another question is, why such a big battery? The trend in EV batteries is to go from pouch to prismatic format with a defined rectangular shape, and also to go larger. Cylindrical cells are getting larger, but when you see the person pick up that GM test battery, it's kind of huge for an EV. I added approximately what the current cattle Chinlin NMC battery would look like next to it. They say the LMR chemistry lends itself well to large formats. Bigger batteries have fewer connections between them to reduce costs, but to make them that big could add internal temperature management problems and other issues. GM believes that their LMR battery can achieve energy density 33% better than typical LFP battery. You know, does this mean they are 33% better than the latest BYD and cattle batteries? That would be a game changer. Their planned portfolio will have high nickel and plenty of cobalt batteries powering premium EVs and maybe future EREVs and PHEVs. They'll also have mid-nickel batteries for mainstream vehicles and LFP batteries for commercial and affordable EVs like the next generation Bolt. Lithium manganese rich batteries would displace mid-nickel as that middle offering and they wanna start doing that in 2028. They plan to produce them with LG Energy at Altium cell plants. All of this sounds great. So what are the downsides? There must be something. One obvious is the rate at which LFP is a moving target for GM. BYD and cattle have megawatt charging batteries now with higher energy density than before. They're not done getting better. A more significant issue is voltage decay. Now I'm not talking about capacity loss, which you see in current EVs today over their lifetime, they lose a little bit of capacity. This is a reduction in the battery voltage, and this is what's been keeping LMR batteries from commercial use. They've been around for years, but nobody has solved this problem of losing voltage over a relatively short life cycle. Search and you'll see research papers from Oak Ridge and Argonne Labs over a decade ago, and that funding has probably now been cut as government waste. You'll also come across many many white papers funded by Chinese universities and government grants. They're no strangers to LMR batteries. Don't think this snuck up on them. Uh, sir, your head, it's on fire. From my limited capacity, it seems like layers are the key to achieving voltage stability over an extended life cycle. Perhaps the larger battery format helps maintain voltage better also. GM said they tested 18 different format varieties and three different sizes. Whatever the solution is, they still have more work to do, more years to ramp up production, and you know, who knows what happens next. China knows about this chemistry too, but I'm excited to see two American companies claiming an early lead. Congratulations to GM and Ford for letting us know a little bit about this promising battery chemistry.